Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is the web series where we follow all the latest updates and rumours regarding the Superman reboot. This is episode 15 and today we finally have a new video. It's been over three weeks since my last episode and I have really been missing this, but we finally have some big news to talk about. According to Scooper, can we get some toast? Lex Luthor will reportedly create a clone of Superman named Ultraman in the new Superman movie. And this has in a way been backed up by DC Film News who does have inside information. He responded to Daniel RPK's post with this gif of Superman standing in front of a clone. And then after this tweet we then got the can we get some toast tweets saying that Luther is going to create a clone of Superman who is going to be called Ultraman. Now if you don't know who Ultraman is he is basically basically an evil reversed version of Superman. He has the same powers, but instead of making him weaker, Kryptonite can make him stronger. In the comics, he has been from Earth-3 and is a part of the Crime Syndicate, which is basically the opposite of the Justice League. So without DC Film News backing this scoop up, I wouldn't have believed it so much, but because a reputable account like DC Film News has actually teased it too, I'm starting to think it may be true. Now this will mean that David Corrinsweet will be playing both Superman and Ultraman, which will be very interesting to see. We saw Ezra Miller act against himself in the Flash movie, Movie, and whilst I thought the deepfake tech on his face was very bad in some scenes, Ezra did act very well against himself, and so did Grant Gustin when he had to do the same thing in the Flash TV show. So I'm looking forward to seeing how David does this in the movie if this rumour is true. I think this would really test and show off his acting ability, but it will also show the huge contrast between his Superman and who Ultraman is, and I think that will only help his portrayal of Superman as we have another the character who looks just like Superman but whose personality is entirely different, which creates the perfect contrasting figure for David. Now the post DC Film News was reacting to was Daniel RPK's with the caption James Gunn Superman with the poster of Superman 4 A Quest for Peace. Now this could have been an April Fool's joke or it could actually have been hinting at something further. Maybe because of DC Film News's response it was referring to Superman fighting a powerful being that Luther had created. Others have theorised that it could be Superman trying to stop nuclear war from happening, but based on what was revealed since his post, I'm willing to bet that RPK was hinting at Lex creating a powerful clone for Superman to fight. And in all honesty, I really like that idea. You want someone who is strong enough to be able to fight Superman in the first place. Someone who is going to make audiences actually worried about them taking on the Man of Steel. But you don't want it to be too big of a character that if they get taken down or killed, then their character is wasted. But Ultraman solves those issues. Firstly, if needed, he doesn't need to be the real Ultraman, as he's not from Earth 3. So it means he can just be a clone that can be the teaser for when the DCU goes into the multiverse and we meet the real Ultraman. But also, he's just as powerful as Superman and because he's a clone, if he does get killed off, they could always bring him back through another clone clone or through Earth 3. Or if he is captured, then we have a really great character for future stories. Because if you go with a character like Zod, then you're just recycling Man of Steel. And if you go with Brainiac, then you have the fear of using too big of a character for the first movie. So an Ultraman clone kind of character really does make sense. Now, I've always thought Metallo or Bizarro would be cool villains to introduce, but using Ultraman, who is actually just a clone of Superman, is a really creative and fresh idea. I've seen some people complaining that this would be breaking comic accuracy, as Ultraman is supposed to be a part of the crime syndicate and from Earth 3, so this change destroys comic accuracy, but as I've always said, I don't care if something isn't comic accurate, as long as it is good. If it works for the movie, then I don't care what the comic counterpart does, so this change doesn't affect me as long as it's good in the movie. Now this next thing is something I hadn't even thought of until I saw Josh from the Den of Nerds mention it, but David Corrinsweet's dog has been on set sitting on people's chairs, and firstly, wow, his dog is so cute, but secondly, what is the design on the chair? 
because that doesn't look like the Superman logo, but it's the same color scheme. Now, some have said maybe it's resembling the shirt rip, but I don't really see it. But the Den of Nerds thinks that this could actually be Ultraman's logo for this movie. Now, Ultraman's logo in the comics and cartoons has changed so much, so there is no specific design to go with. And we have already seen from Superman's logo that Gunn is happy to not go with the classic look. So what if this is some form of logo for Ultraman in this movie? It makes sense that his logo would be on the chairs currently as they are behind closed doors right now. And that possibly could be because they want to keep the villain a secret. And David would be playing Ultraman, so his dog being there would make sense as David is there. Now that is a crazy theory, but it's something that I could see very easily being true. And I want to elaborate on this news of Ultraman being in Superman by connecting it yet again to the engineer. Now, she also filmed in Norway with Superman for the Fortress of Solitude scenes, allegedly. And I wonder if she is against Lex Luthor after he maybe experimented on her and turned her into a metahuman. Maybe Lex has been secretly creating multiple metahumans to create someone to go up against Superman, and the final boss of sorts is Ultraman. And maybe the engineer was one of Lex's earliest creations who escaped, or maybe she was sent by Luthor to fight Superman, but she was defeated or even saved by Superman in battle and she realized he's not the enemy. And maybe later on in the movie, she decides to switch sides and actually help Superman understand what Luther has done and is able to help Superman stop Ultraman and Luther. I think that's an interesting theory and I do think the engineer has a larger role in this movie and the fact she was also in Norway really indicates to me that she plays a deeper role in this film. Unless they just needed her for another Another scene in the movie that takes place in the snow and decided to kill two birds with one stone by filming in the same location as where the fortress is being filmed. But I do think that if she was there to film scenes for the Fortress of Solitude with Superman, then I think she becomes an ally of Superman to help him take down Luther's latest creation. Now that's just a theory, but I think it would be pretty cool. A past creation helps the hero take down the newest creation. And speaking of the engineer, we have our first set photos of her and we can see her costume. Now, I did not expect this at all. From the look in the comics, I was expecting her to wear a mocap suit and for it to be changed in post-production. But it appears that she will actually have her own costume that maybe will be enhanced with CGI rather than a full CGI costume. Now, this is basically all we know really about Superman at the moment. Rumors and production has been very quiet for the past three weeks, hence no videos. But it is rumored that within the next two weeks or so, David Sweat will begin filming outside and so the Superman team could be forced to make an official release of the suit. And I've mentioned before how I want them to do this release, just like the Batman did. Very simple, but very well done. Some light music in the background with a slow video revealing the suit and perfectly presenting the tone of the movie. So I'm really hoping that they do something like that for this Superman film. Whatever they decide to do, they will have to do it very soon to beat the paparazzi to it, as they already got shots of the engineer outside. So it's only a matter of time before they do the same thing for Superman. So I think it's best for the crew and us fans if we get a professional first look at the suit before the press get there. But make sure to let me know your thoughts on everything in today's video in the comments below. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!